Energy Master on Up and Go, The Bridge, 99 FM. We have lively fun chatter when they sign off in the mornings before they depart the studios. And this morning again, I'm being needled, so to speak, by Ronnie and uh, Pernell, who are pulling big jives on me as if I actually flew out and did the broadcast from Canada yesterday. And so they keep telling me, okay, so you're going to Canada? <laughs> What's up with us? <laughs> and I have to be reminding them it's only a simulcast. I'm still here in Jamaica, can't you see? <laughs> so it's all good, gentlemen. WTF, do I need to call it out? Why you don't call it? No, sir, I'm not trying. <laughs> Point for man on top of you. Yeah, you, know. you. <laughs> you know how many times I want to hand over this thing to you people. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, in all seriousness, WTF means what the fact. Get that? All right, here's the fact that we're sharing with you this morning. North Korea and Cuba are the only places you can't buy Coca-Cola. Did you know that? Well, no matter where you go, it's comforting to know you can always enjoy a Coca-Cola, right? Almost anywhere, that is. But while this fizzy drink is sold practically everywhere, it still hasn't officially made its way to North Korea or Cuba, according to the BBC. That is because these countries are under what is referred to as some long-term U.S. trade embargoes. However, we understand that some folks say you might be able to snag a sip of the stuff if you try hard enough, although it'll typically be a lot more expensive than what you'd pay in the States and uh, or, or anywhere around the world for that matter and probably imported from a neighboring country such as Mexico or Cuba. So that is the route that uh, a Coke has to take <laughs> to get into, into, um, into uh, North Korea or Cuba. Yeah, it's not available there. Can you imagine? I know some people who they can't do without their, their Pepsi or their Coke. Uh, but we don't have those issues here. There, there is some degree of availability, and I hope that it remains that way right through the season. Because seriously speaking, a lot of stuff is going on in the um, retail trade, and uh, many retailers are having issues in terms of getting the stuff. And I suspect that for this season, there might be many products that we're accustomed to having that we will not have. In addition to that, I can tell you about a whole series of price increases that is taking place almost with every passing day. In my instance, I could say with almost every delivery. <laughs> so, but it's not my duty to tell you about that. Uh, I guess they'll be published. We welcome you now to our feature, uh, Real Estate Today. And today we're looking at the topic, Pension Funds and Real Estate. And we have two guests who will help us to dissect that topic and to share a lot of information that you can use. But before we introduce them, we want to share with you this fact. We often hear in the news discussions about pensions and pension planning. But what is a pension fund? Do you know? Well, simply, a pension fund is a plan that aims to provide you with a stream of income when you retire. Until relatively recently, Pension funds invested primarily in stocks and, and bonds, but today they increasingly invest in a variety of asset classes, including private equity, infrastructure, and even real estate. So joining us to discuss the connection between pension funds and real estate, we have in the studio with us Howard Johnson Jr., who is the CEO of Howard Johnson Realty Limited, our sponsors for this segment. Good morning, Howie. How are you doing today? I'm not too bad, Richard B. Good morning to you and all your listeners. Good to have you in the studio. Every time. The, 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 flight, the flight doesn't close off until 8 o'clock, so you're, you're, you're definitely on time. Yes, sir. And we appreciate that. For sure, for sure. Don't, don't try that at the end of Either. No, no, no. <laughs> it it <laughs> could be problematic. Exactly. <laughs> and we're also joined by well-known attorney at law, Sanya Goff, uh, who is a partner at Hart Muirhead Fata Attorneys at Law. Good morning and welcome, Mrs. Goff. How are you today? Morning, Richie B. Morning, Howard. How are you? I'm not too bad. Good morning to you too, Doing Sanya. well, doing well. Uh, I should point out that Mrs. Goff is also the president of the Pension Industry Association of Jamaica, the PIAJ. 
Uh, Mrs. Goff, I should tell you that I, I, I didn't know much about this particular um, association, but uh, it seems to be an active one uh, as far as pensions are concerned. Yes, yes, yes. We're an active lobby organization um, really pushing for two main things, um, regulatory reform to improve um, pension protection and retirement security, as well as um, public education around the importance of pension. Okay. So w what role does the real estate uh, really play in, in pension funds? That is what I want to get to now. All right. As an asset class, um, real estate has distinct characteristics that make it an important component of a pension fund's investment portfolio. Mm -hmm. So it's relatively stable and usually provides consistent income like bonds with the opportunity to achieve capital appreciation like stocks. Mm -hmm. um, it's also inflation protection because real estate tends to outperform the market during inflationary times. And then, of course, you would have mentioned earlier the move to expand the investment universe from traditional asset classes such as bonds and stocks. And that's really in a nutshell, diversification. Mm -hmm. And that's important because it manages and reduces risk um, for pension funds as they expand um, their investment portfolio class. Mm -hmm. um, aren't there some legal parameters that govern the investment of pension funds into real estate uh, companies? And if so, can you uh, sort of walk us through a few? Sure. So there are actually no limits on the amount of income generating real estate that a pension fund can hold. So as long as it's generating income, your entire pension fund portfolio could be in real estate. Pension funds cannot invest more than 5% of the value of the fund in property that is not income generating. Mm -hmm. And so once it's income generating, um, you know, I don't know why a pension fund would do everything in real estate, but there is no actual limit provided to income generating real estate. And when it comes to real estate companies, and that's a company established to hold real estate specifically. So you may know, you may hear in the, in the news about um, REITs, mm -hmm. um, real estate investment trust companies. Yes. There no, there's no limit on how much a pension fund can invest in the company. And there are no limits on how much the pension fund can own. So the pension fund could own the entire company. It could own a majority, could control the company. And it could invest as much, of it, as much as it wishes of its pension fund assets in the company. Okay. Um, is that a, a, a comfort level that um, we have arrived at, um, or are there attempts to change that scenario? I think it's actually an ideal position because okay. we do have investment regulations that have set us around other investment classes. Mm -hmm. So there's quite a liberal position in the investment regulations around real estate, and that's actually welcome because of the, the very characteristics I would have outlined earlier you know, stable, consistent income, inflation mm -hmm. protection, part, you know, contributes to diversification. Um, approximately $30, $30 billion of the, of the industry is currently invested in pension assets, mm -hmm. um, in, in real estate pension assets, sorry. Yes. And, and, and that's about 4.3% of the, of the industry. So it's not a lot. So it, it demonstrates that even though there's this liberal allowance, um, investment managers and trustees still ensure that they have a balance in their portfolio with the traditional asset classes like stocks and, mm -hmm. and um, bonds we would have spoken about yeah, earlier. Yes. Um, Howie, um, welcome again. Yes, sir. I, I suspect you would not, as a realtor and a broker, you wouldn't have a problem with the liberal uh, approach that has been taken. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> with those comes. numbers that Sanya <laughs> mentioned. <laughs> Boy, I tell you, I, I, didn't, I didn't recognize um, the... The, the vastness of the, the, the dollar value, as she mentioned, but mm -hmm. to know that it is only a, a small fraction of a total portfolio yes. um, is quite startling. But yes, I wouldn't mind at all. <laughs> I wouldn't mind at all. <laughs> what experience do you, though, as, as a realtor and a broker, have as it relates to pension funds investing in real estate? Yeah, well, we have a, a, a vast um, representation of pension funds um, throughout we, we do represent quite a few REITs and pension funds. Um, and I have to big up one of my agents, Amarda Blake, who um, partners with me along that line. And what we are tasked to do is to really try to find the best investment that they can get the returns that they desire. Mm -hmm. um, because that's ultimately what they're looking for, opportunities. And we have to dig and find and create opportunities for some of these pension funds and REITs as well. So, yes, we do have a vast experience and we represent quite a few of them. Okay. I want to get back to um, Sanya at this point. Uh, Sanya, the, what would you say is the best advice that you have for someone looking to start their retirement planning through a, a pension fund? The first thing I think uh, anyone looking to, to do that would have to consider is where they want to you know, start saving for retirement. So you need to select a retirement scheme provider. 
persons who are self-employed or not otherwise a part of an employer pension plan can join any approved retirement scheme offered by most of the investment houses in Jamaica. So right. NCB, Proven, GMB, all have retirement scheme products. Um, the, the limitation currently, though, is that you can't be an active contributor to more than one retirement scheme. That's the current law right now. Mm -hmm. So if you choose NCB, it's going to have to be NCB. Um, or, you, or unless you choose support, meaning transfer your balance to another retirement scheme provider. The expectation is that will change soon when the act is amended to allow you to contribute to more than one retirement scheme provider during mm -hmm. your lifetime, as in simultaneously. But currently, it's just one at a time. Mm -hmm. um, the second thing you th I think you should do is determine how much you're going to contribute and increase your contributions as often as you can. Most retirement scheme providers have a minimum contribution that you must make annually. For some schemes, it's as low as $1,000 for the year. But of course, you don't want to be making that, so you want to make a bigger contribution. Mm -hmm. But you can't go over the statutory maximum of 20% of your earnings. So that's the current cap. So you can go up to 20%. Um, so the, the second encouragement would be to contribute Determine what you want to contribute, and as, as far as you're able to increase your contribution. Mm -hmm. And then stay engaged, because once you're enrolled, and you're, you know, sometimes people set up these direct deposits from their accounts, and they don't think about it um, after that. But it's, it's important to ensure that you check your statements regularly, ensure you understand what it says, because there are a lot of people when they hit retirement or they're approaching retirement, that's the first time they think about or, you know, really checking what they have saved. Mm -hmm. And then they realize it's not as much as they thought, or it's not going to be sufficient, and then that whole adequacy issue becomes up, and it can be quite alarming. So, you know, always go to your, your, your statement, ensure it has all the information you, you, you need. Um, the beneficiary information needs to be important. So if something happens to you before retirement, you know who's going to get your benefit. And also ask your retirement scheme provider to clarify any areas you may not understand because it's mm -hmm. your pension, right? And it's yes. your retirement security, so you need to own it. Absolutely. We thank you for that advice. And uh, let's just remind them that that was free advice. You yeah. just got the way to go. <laughs> free from the cafe, <laughs> Trust me on that. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, Sanya. <laughs> uh, Howie, um, I also wanted to ask, though, persons who invest in real estate, um, they generally uh, benefit from uh, – Profit value increases as well as rental income. Um, are there other ways that they can make a profit from their real estate investment? Yes, um, there, there are many other ways, and I'll just focus on just a few in the interest of time. We, we could look at persons who are investors who are looking to buy new bills, so they get in very early. Oftentimes, with a reputable developer, they buy from plan, mm -hmm. and then they sell late. It could be the last unit in there, and everybody wants to get into this complex, what is the last unit that you have, <laughs> and therefore you'll see a vast um, um, equity uh, portfolio there. Um, there's another opportunity that exists where persons can do, you know, in, and you hear it a lot of times, especially on HTD, HTTV that we we have been looking at over you know the last couple of, of, of years where you can do fixer uppers you can buy into communities where the properties seem to be derelict or you know in need of TLC or repairs mm -hmm. and you can fix them up and then offload them at the appropriate time and just for the bridge listeners I, I know there are no other radio station uh, listeners tuning in but this is only for the bridge people um, and, and if you are involved in mortgage if you have a mortgage um, another way you can profit which is on oftentimes understated mm -hmm. is that you can ask your mortgage representative you can pay down on your principal so say okay. you got you know you win a lotto <laughs> you get a big money or you get a bonus or some, like, or or some bonus that yeah. i hear you talking about oh. earlier <laughs> right you can ask that this amount be placed on the principal which now minimizes the amount that you have to pay back to the bank uh -huh. and eventually you're going to see um some equity coming back into you and therefore that's another way that you can profit from your real estate yeah, investment yeah. Yes. excellent excellent stuff we're hearing this morning uh how we, i think we're at the point now where we want to do our tip of the day you have a yes, tip for sir. us Yes, sir, we do. Before deciding to invest in real estate, take a look at your current finances. And while you might be mentally and emotionally ready to invest, your financial status might tell a different story. So you need to be in the know. Okay. I noticed that Audley is not in the studio, but that will not stop us from doing going, going but, but not yet, yet gone. gone. Yes, sir. What you got? All right. Well, we have this two-bedroom, two-bathroom apartment located on the third floor in Manor Park Estate, and it can be your new home 
today. It has an open floor plan, ceiling fans, indoor laundry, balcony access, and mountain view from the master bedroom. This property has a lot to offer. And each room is piped for air conditioning unit, but with cool climate, you may never have to use it. And the amenities include uh, covered parking, elevators, beautiful gardens, a gazebo, and 24-hour security. And we're just asking $95,000 per month for this two-bedroom, two-bathroom um, apartment in Manor Park Estate. We're asking you to get in touch with Heather Eaton at 876-410-8066. That's Heather Eaton. You can send her an email at heather at hjrealtors.com. But just certainly give her a call immediately after the show, 876-410-8066. Good luck, Heather. Um, $95,000 a month uh, in, in Manor Park. Manor Park. That's Manor a deal. Park. Oh, yes. Oh, I'm, not yes. Even, I'm not even going to say that we'll go by the end of the day. <laughs> give, give her an hour. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Well, yes. listen, I really want to thank you both uh, today for all the information that you have shared. Um, uh, Sanya, I really appreciate uh, y y the information you shared with us and thank you for all the wonderful advice. Uh, she's an attorney at law and partner at heart, Muirhead Fata, attorneys at law, and she's also the president of the Pension Industry Association of Jamaica. Have a wonderful day, Sanya. Thank you. Thank you, Richie B. All right, Howard, take care. Yeah, you too, Mrs. Golf. All right, and of course, uh, we looked at pension funds and real estate today. Howard, thank you as well for uh, your sponsorship and your participation today, all sure. the information you shared. Where can you be found as well? We're at unit number 15, Ligony Post Mall. That's 115 Hope. Road Kingston 6. You may call our offices at 876-620-1457. Send us an email at info at hjrealtors.com or visit our website www.hjrealtors.com on social media you may use the handle at hjrealtors all right thank you so much that was real estate today brought to you courtesy of howard johnson realty limited thanks once again howard and suzanne So, so DJ Audley, um, we carried the story earlier about um, the garbage on Southermere Road, and um, and within ten minutes after, the garbage truck was there clearing the roadway, right? Oh, yeah, man, right? Yep. Now, we mentioned during real estate today that there was an offer for a place uh, in Manor Park Estate uh, that's going for rental. And I think it was $95,000 a month. Yep. And if you recall, at the end of the, the feature, I said to Howard, um, the agent that has put that on the market through uh, Howard Johnson Realty will not have a problem. Her name is Heather, Heather Eaton. I said, I bet she's going to get that off her hands long before even the end of day. I'm going to give it an hour. Can I tell you something? As, as, as soon as we signed off a while ago, Howard got information that... It's not like somebody wants the place. Need it. Need it. Need it now. So, I suspect that is going to be off the books. Gone. Gone. What, 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 what we... <laughs> Hold on. I, 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 I missed the going, but not yet gone. But not gone. I, I, said, I said it when I was introducing the feature. Audley is not in the studio right now, but no. that's not going to stop us from doing going, but not yet gone. But it was good, though. I uh, heard it. Good news. <laughs> It looks like, let's just say, it looks like it's 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 already gone. All things being equal. 20 minutes now past the hour of 8 o'clock. Don't get back to the music yet, because guess what? We are going into our For the Love of Health feature. And uh, by the way, I was making the point that uh, when you're on the bridge, we got the listeners, we're doing business. So uh, that's why we're getting all this thing, these things done. 25 minutes on the downstart of 8 o'clock. So, Rihanna is in the news in a big way. Of course, uh, it was announced that she'll be the next uh, and the 11th national hero for Barbados. That, is, that news has taken the world by storm. And for the most part, we're seeing very, very positive reactions to that development. Uh, although I did see one or two tweets where persons were saying uh, she dresses in skimpy clothing and, she, and some of the songs that she does, does she really qualify? But that was just maybe one or two tweets out of thousands that we might have seen which are in uh, congratulatory mode. However, she's also in the news because there's great speculation this morning. Now, I'm not telling you that I'm joining the batch of speculators, but many people are wondering, while, while ASAP Rocky, her current boyfriend, uh, is trending, many people are wondering 
and are speculating that the Rihanna that they saw standing on that platform when it was announced by the Prime Minister of Barbados that she's going to be a national hero, that that Rihanna that they saw seems to be, they're saying, she seems to be with child, meaning that she is possibly pregnant. Now, you know you can't call me to ask me if it's true, because I really don't know. But all eyes are now on Rihanna, because it seems to have taken off all around the world. Um, I don't recall seeing her looking like a pregnant woman, though. No. But, but but you you took a closer look than I did it seems yeah the, um, <laughs> no, no, no no I'm just recalling the conversation we had off the air yeah man the, the, um, actually the, the, there was a still shot you you of, thought of her. you thought uh, what looked like a bun in the oven was and, uh, evident and, and you know I'm looking and I'm like yo you know honestly you, you know she looked a little bit you know a little and, puffy maybe. I'm I, listen I, I'm not calling it and I don't know but pregnancy <laughs> rumors have have have, uh, have um have been out there in relation to Rihanna for a long time though and uh, that that is a fact um, but we don't know um, what I can tell you to my it would be surprising to me though I didn't think um, that we would be talking about a baby coming into, into this world by Rihanna before we would get a chance to be embracing the new reggae album R9 that has been touted for so long I really didn't expect that that would be coming before a baby but who knows it is a possibility and uh, until we get uh, Rihanna or ASAP Rocky to confirm or deny, it's just sheer speculation. All right, we'd like to express our get well wishes to a gentleman who burst on the scene some time ago of having been in the music business for quite a while, searching for a hit, and it didn't happen. He hit upon some hard times, and eventually he was uh, seen in a video that went viral as he was actually living at the time, I think, in a gully. And uh, he came out with a song that just took the world by storm. We understand that he was recently admitted to hospital. And uh, from all that we're hearing, there are some issues in terms of health that uh, he mentioned, I think, in one interview that we saw where he was having issues uh, passing urine and stuff like that. But he's working on the challenges and we're praying that he'll be a okay in a short while from now. We're talking about none other than Golly Bop. We're sending out get well wishes to him this morning. Golly Bop did an interview with him some years ago um, at the heights of his popularity after these two songs had really taken off. And uh, some connections of ours in the United States uh, reached out to me at the radio station I was at the time. And there's a Jamaican who does reconstructive surgery um, in the United States, right? Yeah. And uh, this this um, dental surgeon was prepared to offer um, Gully, um, you know, a free, um, f- uh, you know, to fix his um, uh, dental issues. And so he was on tour in England at the time, and we uh, secured an interview with him. And um, we brought up the issue and we said, hey, Gully, um, I don't know if you're interested, but um, there is a Jamaican a dental surgeon, does reconstructive surgery, and he's prepared to uh, give you some help in terms of your dental challenges. Are you interested? And he thought about it for a little bit and then he said, boy, Richie, you hear me? Me hear about that thing there, you know, but you see me right now, my dental situation is a part of my image. So... Me now go take up the half a day, you know. That's what he said. Oh, yeah, and he stuck by it. Four minutes now past the hour of nine o'clock. We remember, remember, we're going all the way until 11 o'clock this morning right here on Up and Go on the Bridge 99 FM to the world. And uh, we thank you for listening. Of course, we have another interview segment coming up right now. December 1, that's today's date, and it's being observed as World AIDS Day to highlight the efforts to eliminate the epidemic. Now, we understand that the theme for World AIDS Day 2021 is End Inequalities, End AIDS. And we're joined at this time by Patrick Layla, who is Policy and Advocacy Officer at the Jamaica AIDS Support for Life. Uh, to share some of the activities that are planned for today. Good morning and welcome, Patrick Layla. How are you doing today? Good morning. I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. Good morning to this All right. Uh, Patrick, 
it is it is in fact World AIDS Day. Um, share with us wh- why is it uh, what is the purpose really of celebrating World AIDS Day from your perspective? Well, the purpose of celebrating World AIDS Day is twofold. It's to um, one recognize the gains that we have made in the fight against this um, epidemic over the um, last three decades or so, and also to recognize, to, to look back at the, 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 the science behind HIV, to continue to build awareness among the populace, and to remind people that HIV is still um, happening, despite our distractions with COVID and everything else, that mm-hmm. HIV is still something that to be concerned about, and that people should still remember the basics, how to protect themselves, and also how to treat people living with HIV. Uh, HIV AIDS has impacted many lives here in Jamaica. What, what would you say is the level of adv- advocacy um, in this regard here, here in our, on our island right now? Well, as the Jamaica AIDS Support for Life, that is what we do. It is, it is what we do every day. It's what we have staff committed to doing, um, advocacy for the rights of people living with HIV, providing services to people living with an affected by HIV and providing the necessary information and commodities to every Jamaican so that if they are HIV positive, they know how to access care and keep in good health. And if they are HIV negative, they know how to stay negative. Mm -hmm. So the advocacy is right across the island. It's happening day in, day out. And today is just a day when we uh, continue that work when we recognize the gains that we have made and when we remind people that um, you can live positively with HIV. Uh, Let me ask you now, uh, Patrick, um, how big a problem would you say uh, workplace discrimination against persons living with AIDS is uh, here in Jamaica? Um, I mean, that is a big problem, and it's a big problem because there are really no provisions in law to prevent discrimination in the workplace against people living with HIV or perceived to be living with HIV. The Ministry of Labor has a national HIV workplace policy that has been in effect since 2012, basically a decade now. And the government has failed, governments, successive governments have failed to move that from policy into law. So it's a very progressive policy. It speaks to not just current employment, but pre-employment. So it prohibits um, preventing someone from getting the job because they are positive or from keeping the job because they are positive. But it's a policy and it's a voluntary process. So a company can voluntarily choose to follow that policy or no, because it is not legislation where they are bound by. So we still have cases coming to us um, day in, day out about persons who have either been dismissed from their jobs because of their status, um, meet the qualifications to get a job, pass the interview and everything, and by the time a medical is done, all of a sudden the offer is no longer on the table, and all of this, we still have that coming in here in 2021, when the science of HIV is so advanced and is showing us that HIV does not prevent anyone from functioning effectively in any capacity. What has the experience of uh, JASL been like when you actually um, provide intervention, and how receptive are companies generally? Well, um, well, the interventions are at different levels. So. When, when it reaches a stage where someone has been dismissed because of their status, then the intervention is twofold because there's a legal intervention and the legal intervention um, basically, because there is nothing in law that prohibits um, based on HIV status or legal team has to come in and jump whoops and make the case from another angle. But it cannot be. So, for example, if you have a staff member that has been in good standing, performing well, 
their last set of performance evaluations are perfect, and then out of the blue you dismiss them with no good reason, then we take that route. So we have managed to get financial compensation for persons who have been dismissed. We do, so that's one level of the intervention. The other intervention is to go into the company to do sensitization with both management and staff Mm -hmm. as to how to relate to someone living with HIV. But then again, there are some companies that are not receptive to this. So you may just have to strictly threaten with legal action about the breach of their duty of care as an employer to an employee and so forth to get some movement from some employer. Okay. All right, so today is a World AIDS Day. What are some of the activities that you have planned for today? Well, today, indeed, World AIDS Day under the theme um, End Inequalities, End AIDS, End Pandemics. And today we are at the in Kingston. We are at the Duane Park School where we will be setting up offering HIV testing and information and commodities to anyone who wishes to access it. And we also have the Ministry of Health alongside us offering vaccination at the same place. Um, Our team in St. Anne is in front of the Great House Pharmacy doing the same thing, HIV testing and screening and vaccination alongside. And our team in St. James is at the Fairview um, shopping center in the Scotiabank parking lot. We are spa- partnering with Scotiabank in Mobile today. And the same services are being offered there, testing and vaccination. And tonight at 6 p.m., we, in this evening rather, at 6 p.m., we invite the public to join us for our virtual candlelight vigil. It's a vigil we have every word is day where we remember those who we have lost. Yes to the disease and that because of COVID as you know it will be virtual this year Mm -hmm. so the link is on all our social media platforms we are Jamaica AIDS Support for Life Mm -hmm. on Facebook at Jasso Info on Instagram Jasso Tweets on Twitter if you want any one of our social media platforms you can find a link to join the candlelight vigil this evening All right, thank you for all the information you shared today Patrick Layla much appreciated have a wonderful day today Thank you for having me. Okay, Patrick Lay, ladies and gentlemen, policy and advocacy officer at the Jamaica AIDS Support for Life, speaking us today uh, in relation to today being World AIDS Day and all of the activities that they have planned uh, he was able to share. Thank you so much. You would have heard the news yesterday as it became uh, known all over the world that uh, Barbados had now become a republic. And in addition to that, uh, Mia Motley did not stop there. She named Rihanna at 33 years of age as their 11th national hero. Of course, that has uh, sparked a lot of debate and, uh, and conversation. Here in Jamaica, many persons are already wondering who might next be named as a hero in Jamaica. And uh, we're here. We, in fact, we have to talk to us uh, about this. Uh, our very special guest at this time, Mr. Conroy B. Wilson, who is a development consultant. He's an author, creative producer, and arts manager. And Conroy is also the executive director of Ashe. Good morning, Conroy. Conroy, how are you doing? Morning, Richard. I'm good. You know, great, great, great. Thank you for having me on the program. Yeah, man. Thank you for joining us at this time, Conroy. What, first of all, are your thoughts on Rihanna? being named or declared a national hero of Barbados? Well, my thoughts are, you know, you go Barbados, you go um, Mia Motley, <laughs> you lead the trend, you be the president of the Caribbean, you break the molds, you break away from colonialism, um, not just in becoming a republic, but becoming, but showing the Caribbean that you don't have to be dead or you don't have to be fighting freedom alone to be considered a hero. In fact, there are people who are now in this century of living who are making enormous contributions to the country and to various countries. Um, And I'm not just talking in culture, but how their philanthropic effort Mm -hmm. and what they, they continue to do. And so being able to celebrate them in that way is so real. We so underlook our culture. 
um, especially in the Caribbean and especially in Jamaica. And that is such a key bridge. So I'm so glad we're doing this on bridge. Yes. That is such a key bridge to everything. In fact, our culture is what has us stand out across the world um, in a real way. We know about Bob Marley. We know about all this. Uh, we know about Louise Bennett, um, who made our our our, our language popular. Mm-hmm. But yet still, we have taken so long to even look at them in a real way. That everywhere in Japan, there are millions of bands and reggae bands and stuff, and everybody else is celebrating our people before we do. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's, it, I, I really wanted to say congrats. And what I love about it is that it is like a kick for Jamaica and for the rest of the region to say, OK, it's already done. So you were you were hemming and hawing and pussyfooting around it. So it's done. What are you now going to do? <laughs> yeah. Now, you know, I heard you say it a while ago. You said we have taken so long and and I, I want to ask you, Conroy, uh, are you aware of any active consultations currently taking place here in Jamaica to look at naming uh, of, of an, an, another national hero or more than one for that matter? I know there has been several petitions for Miss Lou. There has been several petitions for Bob Marley. Mm-hmm. I know in recent times there were petitions for Usain Bolt. Uh, but uh, like I said, we're still maybe in that colonial era that we feel that unless it is that you have taken a bullet or that you have died, you know, fighting for freedom, then it may be, you know, there's, there's a kind of a mindset that, you know, what you do is can't be compared to the heroes. But that was in a period and time when that is what was needed. We're in a new period and time where we're not so much fighting for that kind of freedom. So are you telling me that there are no more heroes among us? There's no more work that anybody is doing or has done and continues to do that is moving us leaps and bounds out of a particular mindset in a new era that is leading the way? It can't be the case. Do, do you get a sense that there's a reluctance here in Jamaica to name a national hero whilst that individual is alive? There is. There is. There, absolutely there is that sense. Because remember, you know, we're coming from a mindset that um, that says it, 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 the hero is named on a particular basis. And maybe something that is, is, is written down to say this is what makes a hero, does not make an, a hero. But Rihanna and, and Mia Motley and, and, and Barbados has surely broken that mold. Because there's not only talk about making her a hero, I, but there's also talk about what she was wearing or not wearing and all that kind of stuff. And I'm saying, but guys, come on. Nanny of the Maroon never wear no brassiere either, so what is the point? <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. I want to get your thoughts also, Conroy, on um, the, the Jamaica becoming uh, a republic, because I understand now that Prime Minister, the Prime Minister might have uh, issued a, uh, or, or said recently that uh, steps will be taken now to move in that direction. What are your thoughts on uh, uh, Jamaica evolving to, to that level of being a republic, becoming a republic? Well, the truth is that that is long overdue, and we have heard several prime ministers, especially around their swearing in, committing that this is one of the things that they want to do and want to move towards. When you look back at our history, Barbados was probably one of the most colonized um, places as it relates to their relationship with Britain and stuff. So for them to even move in that direction before we do you know it's like really guys come on let's move and we said that we are the cultural super state and we said we are the leading um you know caribbean kind of country but it takes that kind of vision and leadership and that kind of bold courageous strategic move to move us forward as opposed to just talk conroy i thank you for your thoughts this morning thanks for being our guest at this time and you have a great day today bro Thank you. All Thank the you. best. All right, take care. Right. That's, of course, a chat with uh, Conroy B. Wilson, development consultant, author, creative producer, and arts manager, and he's also the executive director of ASHE. That was a chat with Conroy B. Wilson. Jamaican Sprint star Elaine thompson Hera has been nominated for the 2021 World Athletics Female Athlete of the Year Award. And um, I'm not even too concerned about who else is in the category. I just know that I'm supporting Elaine all the way. (laughs) Seriously. Um, 
maybe I'm biased. <laughs> or would you say obviously? Like, obviously, we're yeah, biased. But, but um, we are biased, yeah, right? Yeah, we're biased. supporting Elaine, and we hope that she wins it. it. The announcement will be made today, by the way, for Male and Female Athlete of the Year. Of course, uh, Thompson Hero... Hira um, followed up her Rio 2016 Olympic success with gold medals in the 100, 200, and 4x100 at the Tokyo Olympics this summer. Wow, you remember how she blazed uh, the track. And then she lowered her personal best times to 10.54 seconds in the 100 meter at uh, and 21.53 seconds in the 200 meter, making her the fastest woman alive. She is Jamaican. I think she did enough to uh, to cop this uh, award, and I am 100% in her support. Good going, uh, Elaine, and we wish you well. The announcement will be made later on today. I don't have a vote, but I have an opinion, and uh, I'm suggesting and hoping and praying that Elaine thompson Hera will cop the Female <laughs> Athlete of the Year award. You're still running? I, I am still trying to get that race completed because I thought I was leading, uh, representing my house, plant house at, at Titchfield. And um, uh, as it turned out, the finishers left me behind so far that the spectators came across the track. And um, <laughs> that was that. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't finished the races yet. All right. I think it's time now for the Global Connection. And uh, we have, who do we have today? Killaboo. Good morning, Killaboo. Good morning, Killaboo. And every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, right here, he makes the connection to the Bridge 99 FM for Up and Go with Richie B. Let me make that connection right now. Good morning. The connection is here. The connection is clear. Good morning, sir. Morning, brother. Morning, morning, morning. I hope you didn't hear me confess about uh, my misfortunes whilst uh, running in high school. No, I, I didn't get to hear oh, that. What happened? Boy, what happened? That means I'm going to have to repeat it. <laughs> I, I was talking about the fact that on the uh, IG page for Bridge 99, today they focus on uh, and feature um, Vaughn, which is Vaughn Thorpe, one yes. of our producers here. Yes. And I see where they mentioned that he was a runner and a track star. And then they go, well, he was in high school at any rate. So I was making the point, not for the uh, tri-state area to hear me, but since you're on now, I can't avoid uh, saying it. Um, I attempted the the 200 meter race in high school, mm -hmm. representing my house, uh, plant house at Titchfield, and mm -hmm. uh, I thought because of uh, where I was drawn, the lane that I was drawn in, I thought I actually um, w was going to be leading out all the way. But by mm -hmm. the time we straightened up and are going towards uh, the, the the finishing point, I was so far behind uh, Killaboo that the spectators came across the track and watched the other finishers and so i had to detour <laughs> and to date i have not yet finished that race but you know something i've told myself one of these days i'm going to go back to carter park and i'm just going to run a 200 meter race to my satisfaction it, it, it's better late than never better late better. Than never. <laughs> well you know what's also interested in what you said you mentioned titchfield yes sir that's in portland yeah man port antonio my, my father teach that fit titchfield for a couple of years Back in the late 70s. Oh, yeah? Don Donald Thompson. Donald Thompson? Yes. Okay. My family, my father's family is from Portland, the yeah. Thompson family. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. So my small, father was a, was a teacher at Teachfield. Small world, years. son. Yeah, before you're, he moved you're, to you're, Kinsley. You're from good stock. <laughs> 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 good to hear that. Good to hear yes, that, Killaboo. Yes, so you actually spend some time in Portland? Yes, every year, um, summertime, Christmas time, as soon okay. as school is out. I grew up in, in Kingston, right. went to Duane Park, then George's before I came here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, you, know. you missed out on the Titchfield Bowl, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Portland are the best parish, man. Yeah, man, without a doubt. So yeah, we had some, some new things today on the program. News uh, returned. We had uh, major news in sports and entertainment package at mm -hmm. 8.50 this morning. We we're getting good responses to that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did, of course, uh, yesterday, we did our first um, global connection with Canada on G98.7. Uh, that has nice. gone down very well. I think we'll connect with them on Friday morning at 8.45. Then, of course, at 10.13, we'll connect with you and the, um, and the Irie Jam family. So a lot is going on. Good positive developments for radio in this region. Sounds good to me. Sounds good. It only gets greater only and gets greater better. from here. UK is calling, and we're going to be responding to those calls also. 
True indeed. Um, today being December the 1st, um, it is uh, anniversary here in the United States. Um, Rosa Parks was arrested mm -hmm. in Montgomery, Alabama after a bus driver ordered her to give up her seat to another passenger who was a white man at the time. And, you know, Rosa Parks was a black woman and mm -hmm. she decided not to give up her yeah, seat. Yeah. And that took place in 1955 on this day, December the 1st. Okay, December 1, World mm -hmm. AIDS Day as well. In yeah. Interestingly, yeah. Um, I see where, just before we get to the music, though, I see where the, the, the president and others are saying that um, there are going to be tighter restrictions on travel into America. Yes. Yeah, as a matter of fact, um, there are going to be some pre-boarding uh, checks that will be required. And also, when you alight from the plane and uh, disembark, you also might have to do some tests yes, because of, uh, of this uh, Omicron uh, variant that is out there. Although we haven't heard it being said it's in America, but I think they're trying to make sure that it doesn't get there. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. We're going to hear about it here in the United States as well. Um, you know, the sad thing is a lot of people are looking forward to, you know, actually coming out of this pandemic situation. And it seems like we're going back in for another cycle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah man. Bridge 99 FM to the world. And, of course, this simulcast with uh, Ivory Jam Radio, New York City covering the tri-state area. New York, New Jersey, Connecticut. My name is Richard B. And on the other side of in the NYC, none other than Killer Boo. Yes, sir. It goes by several names. <laughs> uh, so Sin is going to be doing an outside broadcast on the 18th of December over there at that uh, very popular mall in the in the uh, Queens yeah. area. Yeah. Yes, in the Valley Stream area. Oh, actually, it's Valley it's a, Stream. Okay. Yes, it's a toy drive um, that we do here each and every year for uh -huh. the children. You know, yeah. to put a smile on the kids' face. So that's um, fantastic. We ask, yeah, we ask people if they have an um, unwrapped toy for the, the children between the ages of age 4 to 12. Mm -hmm. They could drop that off. At, we have some locations here at the Irish Jam office and um, Superb Motors and Genesis One restaurant here yeah. in Queens. Yeah, that's fantastic. I will definitely. Uh, well, we first want to commend the, the, the team for putting this together. And uh, no doubt we'll get more to talk about on that uh, as we go along. There are two things on my mind, though, um, Kilabu. Mm -hmm. uh, one is um, uh, tonight, many persons who would normally watch uh, Chris Como will not be seeing him on CNN because yesterday we were talking about it. Uh, the fact that some, some documents uh, showed mm -hmm. that uh, he went to great lengths to, to sort of help his brother, former New York uh, governor Andrew Como, mm -hmm. during a sexual harassment scandal. And uh, some documents were put forward uh, and uh, became public. CNN has decided to indefinitely suspend Chris Wow and uh, yesterday when when we saw all that was happening I actually made a comment on air yesterday saying that I don't know if he's gonna survive this and mm. uh, it's it's interesting you know you know when that story was going on uh, Richie B I mm -hmm. said to myself this this is a sort of a conflict of interest here yeah. you know with his brother being on the network and, yeah. and and everything that was going on I knew that it at some point it would get to this where you know mm -hmm. he, he would probably side with his brother and yeah, that was, yeah, well, that's what was going was. on behind the scenes definitely so in, in a much deeper way than many people would have uh, realized initially mm -hmm. so um he might have some consequences that he'll have to face the other thing that we haven't mentioned yet uh, and uh, it's a good time for us to say congratulations i suspect to rihanna who has now been announced as the 11th national hero of Barbados. That is yeah, big, Kilabu. Congrats, congrats to Rihanna, for real. Yeah. Um, we spoke about it here yesterday also. Right. Um, that's, a, that's truly a good look. And you know the other conversation that's coming up, everybody is saying, well, why hasn't this been done for Bob yet? <laughs> oh, you yes. Know, I, 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 it's, it's probably not the right time to bring up that now. Let's just celebrate Rihanna because yeah. I guess we dropped the ball already. Yeah, we have. But uh, yeah. we really need to put it out there that uh, we need to do something here. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know if it's... We spoke about this on, on the program earlier today with a guest, uh, Conroy. I don't know if it's a case where they don't uh, necessarily want to announce a hero whilst that person is alive. But if, that, if those are the rules, they might have to look back at those rules, frankly mm -hmm. speaking. And um, and do something about it. We but, have a very uh, good list. To yeah, we have from. a strong list that we can choose from. Mm -hmm. And also the matter of uh, Jamaica becoming a republic. I think the prime minister has since uh, Barbados has gone that route now, uh, officially, has mm -hmm. uh, put forward some arguments to say that uh, they'll be um, sort of fast tracking a look at uh, Jamaica moving in that direction. So that's also a development out of uh, out of yesterday. And also, um, real quick, mm -hmm. speaking of Rihanna, who's a Grammy um, winner, the 64th Annual Grammy Awards will be yep. hosted by Trevor Noah on Monday, January 31st. Yep. Um, and it will be aired on CBS. So we say once again, congratulations to all nominated in the reggae mm -hmm. category. Indeed. Um, quick one. Um, 
ASAP Rocky is trending. Do you know why? No, I do not. S there's a lot of speculation as to whether or not um, Rihanna is with child, meaning pregnant. Mm. Since her appearance um, in, in Barbados um, when she was announced as the national hero. Um, um, I, I can't get ASAP Rocky. Do you know anything about this? <laughs> no, I'm going to have to look now. <laughs> I'm going to have to look now. <laughs> but seriously, though, um, uh, Kilibu, I thought we'd be getting R9 before we got a baby from Rihanna. Mm. Uh, mm. That's the mm. album that she has been promising to do all reggae. But that, it looks like if we are to believe what, uh, what what's trending... We might get a baby from Rihanna before we get R9. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> maybe, the, maybe, maybe the baby will motivate her for some, you know, other oh, music. Somebody's saying here, or maybe, or maybe both. <laughs> so that's a possibility. <laughs> Time certainly flies when we're having fun. It's 19 now before the hour of 11 o'clock. Killaboo, you still there, right, bro? Yes, my brother. I'm still here. Ain't going yeah. nowhere. All right. Uh, <laughs> you know, a lot of times when stuff happens uh, in, in, say, uh, America or Europe, um, mm -hmm. It gets a lot of attention here in the Caribbean, but I want to highlight very quickly the success that some uh, doctors had over there in Nigeria. Africa mm -hmm. is where we're going at the University of Ilorin Teaching Hospital. We want to say congratulations to the medical team there, Kilibu. They actually separated successfully Siamese twins just recently. And so nice. we want to celebrate that victory over there in Africa, in Nigeria, to be exact. Good look, eh? Nice, true. Definitely a good look. I mean, Richie, we've been doing these things for generations and centuries. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, we never get the highlight and the credit. But, you know, good thing now, them can't hide it any Them further. can't hide it. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Music is fun, isn't it? Yes, always fun. Always yeah, fun. Always Music is fun. life. Yeah, it is. So yeah. they say about water. <laughs> and uh, uh, and uh, what's his name is not finding it too funny right now. He got a bill for 540,000 Jamaican dollars. Governor, mm -mm. he's gone viral with it and he's obviously having to uh, have some conversation with the water supply company. $540,000, brother. Wow. Wow. <laughs> water. Yeah. We're out of time, Kilabu. Great to having you as always, man. And have always a great no day problem. today. Always a pleasure. You take care. Have Try a wonderful state. day. Big ups every time. Thank you. That's, of course, the Global Connection that was done today with uh, Irie Jam Radio out of New York City, covering the uh, tri-state area, New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. And, of course, uh, today being a Wednesday, we get a chance to do it again on Friday morning when we'll do a double, because at 8.45, we'll be live into the uh, GTA, the Greater Toronto Area, live with G98.7. And then at 10.13, we'll be live again in the tri-state area with uh, Irie Jam Radio. 21st Century Radio in full effect. Right now, it's 12 minutes before the hour of 11 o'clock. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to play you some songs right now. Big ups to Bounty Killer. We understand that uh, it's now confirmed that Snoop Dogg will be featured on his album. And that's... Uh, Making another big name added to that list of artists working along with Bounty Killer for his upcoming project, King of Kingston. I tell you, that is going to be an album to a collector's uh, item. And uh, it's a wicked list of, uh, of collaborators. Bounty Killer putting a lot of work into it under the uh, partnership of uh, or with, uh, with uh, Juna Gong Marley, the producer. Big things are expected for that album. Six now before the hour of uh, 11 o'clock. We're almost out of here. And hi to Joanna listening. Big respects to you and your family. We'd like to thank uh, Howard Johnson Jr. and uh, Sanya Goff, who are our guests. Uh, Howard from Howard Johnson Realty and uh, Sanya Goff, uh, an attorney at law from the company. Mm, she's a partner, actually, at Hart Murad Fata Attorneys at Law. She was our guest with Howard in the uh, Real Estate Today segment at 8 o'clock. We thank also our news team. Uh, today, the 1st of December, uh, a new uh, item has been added to our mornings as we now have News 360 at 8.50 a.m. And the team did very well today. Big ups to all of them. We also had a chat with Patrick Layla, Policy and Advocacy Officer at the Jamaica Aid Support for Life at 9 o'clock. Thank you again, Patrick. And Conroy B. Wilson, development consultant, author, creative project, uh, producer, and arts manager, as well as executive producer of Ashe, was our guest at 9.30, looking at uh, what's next for us as far as uh, naming a national hero is concerned. 
It's a topical issue, and we thank Conroy for speaking with us at that time. We thank Killaboo for sharing space with us inside of the uh, global connection with Irish Jam Radio and Bridge 99 FM. Thanks to our peeps in the streets, all of you, for giving us reports from all across Jamaica today. We thank you, and we wish you a wonderful day. And uh, this was the morning when, 10 minutes after we highlighted in our traffic segment, garbage that was strewn across the roadway on Southern Air Road in Halfway Tree, and within 10 minutes, the garbage truck was there collecting the garbage and freeing up the traffic. That is effective radio, if you ask me. So we say big respects again. Thanks, DJ Aldi. Thanks, Jody. Thanks, Richie. Thank you, too, to uh, Romaine. And Nari, who's also in the studio. Jeff was also here. And the rest of the team, thank you. Big respects to all of our listeners. You made it happen. Thanks for listening from here in Jamaica and around the world. And we catch up with you again, God willing, come tomorrow morning at 7 in the eye when we'll do it all over again. Richie B, the party master, on Up and Go, The Bridge, 99FM.